Kristen? Okay. Okay, uh, the president has decided at this moment not to sign an executive order that would ban workplace discrimination by any federal contractor on the basis of sexual orientation. Based on the fact that the president has made past statements saying that he supports non-discrimination policies in the workplace, why not sign this executive order? Uh, thank you for the question. The president is dedicated to securing equal rights for all LGBT Americans. And that is why he has long supported an inclusive Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which would prohibit employers across the country from discriminating on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. The President is committed to lasting and comprehensive non-discrimination protections, and we plan to pursue a number of strategies to attain that goal. Our hope is these efforts will result in the passage of ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination uh, Act, uh, which is a legislative solution to LGBT employment discrimination. Uh, and I would make the comparison here that, that pursuing that strategy, the passage of ENDA, is uh, very similar to the uh, approach the President took uh, for the legislative repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Can you make the distinction between Thank you. Can you make the distinction between ENDA and signing this executive order? In other words, if he does support ENDA, why not sign this executive order, which relates to a smaller part of the population, and get that policy started? Again, I think, I think that the DADT repeal is instructive here in terms of uh, the approach that we're taking at this time. Uh, and while it is not our usual practice to discuss executive orders that may or may not be under consideration, we do not expect that an EO on LGBT non-discrimination for federal contractors will be issued at this time. Uh, we support, as I just said, legislation uh, that has been introduced, uh, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, and we will continue to work with congressional supporters to build, sponsors rather, to build support for it. Um, we're deeply committed to working hand in hand with partners in the LGBT community on a number of fronts to build the case for employment non-discrimination policies, including by complementing the existing body of compelling research with government-backed data and analysis, building a coalition of key stakeholders and decision makers, directly engaging with and educating all sectors of the business community, from major corporations to contractors to small business, and raising public awareness about the human and financial costs of discrimination in the workforce. Chico Almeida, who's the president of Freedom to Work, has issued a statement saying, quote, this is a political calculation that cannot stand. Is this a political calculation? Absolutely not. The president is committed uh, to um, securing equal rights for LGBT Americans, and that is why he has long supported ENDA. I think the president's record on LGBT issues speaks volumes about his commitment <coughs> to securing equal rights for LGBT Americans. The approach we're taking at this time is to try to build support for passage of this legislation, a, a comprehensive approach uh, to uh, legislate uh, on the issue of non-discrimination. Um, and uh, I think, again, the approach that we took uh, in bringing about the repeal, working with Congress to bring about the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, is instructive here. Uh, and. Uh, as it did then, our approach to this piece of the legislation demonstrates the President's very firm and strong commitment to non-discrimination and to securing equal rights for all Americans. Okay, just, uh, that, that if we could, at this time, does that apply to some sort of commitment to, or because of the open issue executive order so at a later time? Well, I'm simply saying that our, our approach is to focus on trying to build uh, and expand support for passage of ENDA. Uh, that is our support. In terms of Again, we don't, as a rule, and you know, we, we try to stick to it here, we uh, don't talk about executive orders that may or may not be under consideration. In this, in this case, I can tell you that at this, th this time we're not considering uh, such an uh, executive order. We are, however, actively working with um, stakeholders to build support for passage through Congress of a piece of legislation uh, that would be far more comprehensive than an executive order. Does, 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 hey guys, does, one at a time. Thailand, like the Congress, will uh, pass the end of giving, giving its current makeup, and the president has issued numerous executive orders under the theme mm -hmm. "We can't wait" because Congress has been able to pass job related legislation. Why is the president making this distinction with this LGBT? We believe nonprofit? that this is the 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 right approach for uh, to achieve success here in a broad and comprehensive legislated action. Uh, and at this time, we're not considering, as a part of that, an executive order. Now, 
there are executive orders that this president has signed, and there are executive orders, either real or imagined, that the president has not acted on. Uh, and uh, that's because we look at each issue and we decide on a strategy that we think makes the most sense to achieving the president's policy objectives. Does, does yeah, the president Chris, believe yeah. that Executive Order 11246 that has been in place since 1965 is redundant to Title VII? You're going to have to. Uh, that's the federal contractor mm -hmm. executive order that's been in place for race, religion, and sex since 1965. I haven't had that discussion with him, Chris. What I do know for a fact is that this president is absolutely dedicated to securing equal rights for LGBT Americans. I think his re record speaks uh, volumes uh, in support of that statement. And I think that the strategy that he pursued and the work that he did with Congress and with uh, allies in support of repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, testifies to um, his commitment. And, but unlike uh, and you Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the, the executive order route on employment non-discrimination for federal contractors has a separate portion, mm -hmm. even in addition to the legislative route that's been in existence since 1965. So this is not the same as Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and why has the President not approached it in a similar way to that one? It, it, it is a similar approach to the approach we took to Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The, um, again, I haven't talked to him about other executive orders here. What I can tell you is we're not considering an executive order on this at this time. We're focused on a legislative approach, a comprehensive approach that would be uh, much broader uh, through legislation. And, and uh, you know, we are going to work with uh, stakeholders to try to build support uh, for passage of ENDA. Just a question. Let me I just have one more question before, uh, before we move on. You said that uh, the President uh, legislatively repealed the Don't Tell. Well, that's true. He twice took administrative action to limit the discharge authority, twice before uh, that repeal legislation was passed. So to say that, uh, that we, we, you need to have legislation in it and not uh, go with uh, administrative action first is just not true. Well, th that's actually not a correction, Chris. It is uh, a separate in statement of action and fact. We are not approaching this uh, at this time through executive authority through an executive order. We are, however, uh, in another demonstration of the President's firm commitment to securing equal rights for the LGBT, LGBT community, uh, aggressively pursuing uh, passage of ENDA. And that requires working with stakeholders uh, and uh, building a body of persuasive evidence that this is the right thing to do, and that is what we are committed to doing. 